All right, so this is a pretty fun and easy one. We're creating this effect right here in Geometry Nodes. You can do it on any effect you want. Since I love graphic design, I did it on uh, some text, just some fun XYZ art here. It's done with a couple cool nodes in Geometry Nodes. Very simple process, but a very cool effective effect. Now there's just a few more days left to get real-time materials for 35% off. If you want to get that, that's a pack of a bunch of really cool procedural materials. That's going until the end of this month. Use the code two years. Again, just a few more days left. If you want to grab that discount, you can. Uh, with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. All right, so go ahead and use whatever shape you want. You can even get really creative using like a hand model or a head or a car, anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and use some text. All right, if you're using text or even say like an SVG, kind of a curve object, make sure you right click and you convert this to a mesh. So now you have a uh, real geometry. I'm hopping to the uh, geometry nodes workspace and let's go ahead and build this. So we're gonna click new and we're gonna do um, mesh to volume. Mesh to volume right there, you can see it working. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a distribute points in volume. So distribute points in volume, that's gonna create, take all your points and put it within, uh, inside of it in 3D. If you haven't come across this term, volume is often referred to as the space within an object. That's the volume of the object. So we're distributing it within the volume, but it's also like a volume node. So it's kind of double meaning here. You, you get it. Um, you can bring up your density too to kind of see, yep, it's working. So now we need to get, these are all points. So we're gonna get an, an instance on points instance on points and I'm going to go ahead and use an icosphere and I'm going to set it to a subdivision of two. That's really as far as we're going with this because it gets dense really quick and make sure to save often here. Bring my radius down pretty significantly and you can see how it's very random. Uh, in my original animation, it's more of a grid, which is really nice. We just turned it on the grid. Um, right here on the spacing, be really careful because if you get dense quick, your computer will crash just because it's dealing with all the geometry. So I'm going to do 0.06. And that's going to make it decently, you know, subdivided. But for me, my computer can handle it relatively well. We can bring my radius down to my spheres to really appreciate this. So now that we have this set up, the, the animation effect is created by using textures. So what I'm going to do is get a map range node so we can actually distort and play with the texture. And in this case, I'm going to use the wave texture because one, it looks cool. And two, it's very easy to loop with an animation. So I'm going to plug that into the value. And you can see it's now working You play with that phase offset. Uh, what I'm going to do is go from bands to rings and from uh, X to spherical and then bring that scale down so you can start to see, you can start to see spheres. So notice how it's a massive gap right here. That's because the texture is scaling those spheres to zero. And we know this because max of one, that's the, see how big those are? That's a value of one. Minimum is zero. You can see how they're going all the way down to zero. So you can meet it there by bringing them up a little bit and then bring your max up. And then I'm gonna get a set shade smooth node Set shade smooth, everything's gonna be shade smooth now. And then what I like to do is throw a little bit of distortion on the texture, and then you can maybe bring that down a little bit. Um, but now you can have some fun and you can bring that max to kind of get them to intersect. I actually kind of like the objects intersecting in this case. But now you can see it is working. So we can just kind of look at this nice and big, phase offset, we can see this is a very cool effect. And if you're using the wave texture, let's just go ahead and loop the animation. So we're gonna go here and get the timeline and I'm gonna keep it at 250 frames, go back to frame zero, and then uh, right over over here, I'm gonna hit T and we're gonna get the linear so that everything's nice and linear and it doesn't speed up, slow down in our animation. What I'm gonna do now is just hit I Go to the very end and we're gonna do a little bit of math that we don't have to understand. Type in 10 asterisk pi and that is going to give you a perfectly, well, don't have caps lock on. We're gonna do 10 asterisk pi. That's gonna do the math for us to make this seamlessly loop. And uh, I used a value of 10. Uh, the higher the value, the faster, but it needs to be an even number to loop. So if you want to be slower, maybe six asterisk pi would be quicker, 12 or 18 asterisk pi. So you can kind of have some fun with that. And now 
our scene is looping. Now, if you want to create a really cool scene with this, I'll show you how to apply materials if you're not super versed in geometry nodes. I'm gonna just go to uh, a cycles view and give it some lighting really quick. So what you can do, uh, what I did was I just gave it a, just a basic floor and then with the materials, we can get a set material node. Uh, let's see, set material. And then we're just gonna give it new, we're gonna call it, uh, we're just gonna call it weird and make it orange. And here's what I like to do. When these objects are touching, it's fun to play with the fact that they're touching. And what I mean by that, let's hop on over to the shading tab and we're gonna use cycles. I can't remember if this node works in Eevee, but we are gonna view in cycles. So what I like to do is I'm just gonna hover over here and hit control C. And we're gonna get a color ramp. And then I'm gonna uh, hover over the white, control V. And then what I'm gonna do is get a ambient occlusion node. And that's basically going to make things that touch kind of have this the color change. See how they're really close, so they're gonna change color. And you can really goof around with that. And then I'm gonna hover over here at control V and then just kind of bring that to a dark orange. And that gives you this very, I don't know, cool effect. I like it, I think it's weird and I like weird, which is why I titled the material weird. So you can do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get a plane really quickly. So I'm just gonna go ahead, get a plane and then make sure that it's not coming through the bottom all the way. We'll go back to cycles and I'm gonna go ahead and get a light, area light. We're gonna put one, we're gonna put one above it at a strength of like 500. Then I'm gonna hit shift D and I'm hitting G to move it around and I'm hitting R twice to move it. And we'll get one to point at it like that and then we'll get the ground, I mean the, the sky to be black. We'll get the ground plane just to be metallic and uh, we'll give it a uh, clear coat as well so it reflects, reflects a little bit. But actually no, we're just not gonna do the clear coat. We'll just do regular roughness like this. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, get a camera, point it like here, control alt zero, snap it to view and I'm gonna do orthographic view you can then kind of rotate it here and scale it up. And that's kind of how I did my original, my original look. And maybe do it a thousand and then you can press play and watch your animation. At this point, you can take it and make it your own. Uh, but that's how I created this effect right here. It's super cool. You can apply it to anything, make some cool motion graphics and that's how it goes. Um, that's it. Don't forget, if you want to grab real-time materials, you have just a couple more days to get 35% off. Use the code 2YEARS, linked in the description. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.